Well, hello, everyone. I have been looking forward all week to being with you. Welcome to Art Class Live. I'm Jim Pence. Uh, I'm an artist with See the Light, and uh, we're going to have some fun drawing today. And we're going to be talking about contours and composition. That was the, the focus of Art Class Lesson 3. So if you're following along, you'll know what we're talking about. If you're not, then uh, we will kind of bring you up to speed. Uh, so let's uh, get started. I wanted to show you a couple of things first before we go too far. First, let me turn this layer off. I, I, I tell you that you always need to be drawing. And uh, I wanted to show you what I'm working on right now. Uh, I'm doing, I, I've mentioned before, a series of 30 portraits. And uh, this is number nine. So I'm almost a third of the way through. But you see, I've got a ways to go on this. I've got about two and a half hours already in on uh, this little bit right here. So, so I've got a ways to go and I'll show you each week how it's progressing. I may be finished with this next week uh, and maybe not, it just depends. Uh, some, some drawings go fast, some are slow because sometimes I have to take some time to figure out how I'm going to approach them. And that's one of the things that's really cool about art uh, is it's, it's a process, uh, drawing is, is learning to do some problem solving. And, and every portrait I do, every picture I do, uh, I have uh, certain problems that I have to solve. You know, what colors to use, or if I'm doing, you know, monochrome like I'm doing here. Uh, well, where do I start? This is obviously a, a fellow with a hat on and he's got a very distinguished face. Uh, and uh, it's, it's kind of hard to know uh, even where to begin. And my styles and uh, approach is a little different than a lot of artists. Uh, but, uh, you know, I'm, I'm working and going along. Well, I wanted to show you something else. Uh, last week, uh, we talked uh, again about uh, uh, contour drawing, modified contour drawing. And uh, I, I have this picture that was sent to me uh, by my granddaughter, uh, Ellie, and she did a wonderful uh, modified contour drawing of a compass. Uh, and uh, this is just really, really good work. And I, I really am excited. And I'm hoping that you're out there doing the same kind of work uh, and uh, again, all, all you need to do to, to really get good at this kind of art uh, and this, this drawing skill is uh, just find objects around the house and uh, draw them. And as you do that, uh, you're going to get better and better. And uh, so uh, three cheers for Ellie on this. It was a, a good piece of work. And uh, incidentally, uh, next week, I'm going to tell you uh, how you can win a, a copy of our cartooning uh, videos, or if you already have those, uh, any other video of equal value uh, out uh, that, that we have available. And uh, next week, I'm going to show you or tell you what, what to do about that if you want to enter to to win. And uh, all you have to do is a little bit of drawing, but it's not a drawing, you know, it's not like an art show where I'm going to judge uh, by the best. Uh, I'm going to I'm trying to get you to, to draw some things and send them to me. So, so next week, I'll tell you how we're going to do that. And, uh, and then the month of October, you'll have the whole month uh, to draw something and send it in. Okay, so I'm going to turn that off. And we have a picture of an apple. Uh, and uh, if you watched the video, you know that uh, uh, in the previous video, uh, Pat showed you how to do a contour drawing uh, of an apple. And in the second video, she does several things. Uh, she talks about the different tools that you can use. And I'm going to address that too a little bit later. Uh, she talks about uh, not just the different tools, but she talks about principles of composition. And she does a uh, modified contour drawing, which remember modified means you can look back and forth at your paper while you're doing the drawing. And uh, she did a, a modified contour drawing of uh, two apples. Uh, so uh, what I'm going to do here first, and I'm going to do this just very quickly, is talk a little bit about composition. And uh, then uh, we'll, we'll do uh, a, a, an apple drawing after I show you some of the tools that I use. 
Now, if you notice here, we've we've just got a plain plain white background with an apple, all oh, pretty much dead center, and. Uh, this is just a starting picture to look at to to say you know this this would be good if what you're working on is just your skill uh, of drawing an apple and and if you're you know just working at developing your drawing skills uh, then composition isn't quite uh, as uh, as big an issue uh, just like when I'm doing my portraits I'm I'm not just particularly caring too much at this point about the the composition. I just want to work on my my drawing skills. So, uh, but what you know, what can you do? What is composition? Why do we do it? And and what makes it different? Well, I've chosen a number of pictures, photographs of apples uh, that uh, will give you an idea of how several different photographers uh, designed a composition just pretty much with apples. And uh, hopefully it'll give you an idea for some of the things uh, that you draw, because uh, there are certain principles that uh, that come through as you, as you look at these. So let's look at the first one. Okay, this one, uh, the apple is still, it's not really dead center. Uh, it's actually a little bit below center, but uh, it, what is different about this composition is what the photographer does with the background. And here the photographer uses value uh, to really highlight that apple. And he uses lighting too. You can see the sh uh, shadowing coming off on the right side. And uh, so uh, so this is one thing. He, he's got a nice dark framing here and then highlighting in the center uh, and uh, the uh, the apple again, even though it's it's kind of centered, uh, it's still well composed because of what the artist has done or the the, the photographer has done. And again, it is a little bit below center. Uh, okay, let's go on to the next one. I like this one. Uh, this time, the photographer decided to use uh, some other objects. Now, the apple is still the primary focus here, uh, but uh, he he threw in some what looks like some school books and uh, put the apple on top. And so uh, so he's made it more interesting uh, because of one where he positioned the apple. Notice it's not in the dead center of the page, and two, it's on these books, and, and the books aren't even arranged uh, symmetrically. They're a little bit off. This top one is at more of an angle. You can see the table there at the bottom. So, so that's a way to compose a picture. Uh, add some, some other elements to it, even if the apple is your primary uh, focus. Now, here's one I liked, and this is somewhat similar to what Pat did. Uh, it's two apples, one behind the other, but the difference here is, uh, one, the apples are lying on their side, and uh, to the second one, the uh, photographer used uh, what's called depth of field uh, to make that back apple a little bit blurry. Uh, and uh, so the primary focus is this apple here. Again, it's it's not dead center. If you put a grid on there, it's going to be off center a little bit, uh, but a very nice composition. Okay, let's look at another one. Okay, again, uh, just a creative arrangement here. And I'm going to come back because this is the one I'm going to uh, sketch out here in just a bit. Uh, but uh, the, the photographer has used a number of uh, elements here. Notice the really dark background. Eventually, we'll, we'll be discussing value, which is light and dark, and uh, how to use those to, to make uh, your, uh, your painting or your drawing more interesting. Uh, and also positioning. Notice this apple standing up, and this one is on its side uh, with the uh, stem pointing off kind of in, in this direction. And then uh, the, the photographer has a nice little I can't tell if that's cloth or paper there that the apples are sitting on. Uh, but uh, again, just something to add a little color. You notice the colors uh, are red and green. So they're still kind of staying in that same uh, color palette. And, and that's something else. When we get to color, we'll talk about using a limited palette and, and keeping not, not just using every color that we could possibly use, but uh, restricting the colors that we use. Uh, so... Uh, 
there is a, a different one. Now, here's here's one that I really found interesting and kind of fun. Uh, the, the photographer decided, let's shoot the, the apples from a very unexpected direction. Uh, and sometimes that's a really good way uh, to compose a picture is, is, you know, put it in a position or a location that is out of the ordinary. We don't uh, hardly ever see pictures of apples from the bottom side up. And uh, so, uh, so that's a, a different kind of composition. And then notice he's, uh, or he or she has a, them on a, uh, a table of some kind that's really weathered and uh, it, it just has a very nice rustic look. And the, the patterns here uh, are pulling your eye, you know, to and through those apples. Okay, another one where we're going to move away from two apples. We've got a grouping of apples now. Again, notice the use of value, uh, how we've got a really dark background. We've got a lot of shadowing up in here. And we have one primary focus apple, but we have three other ones that are secondary. And again, we've got the use of depth of field. So these in the back are, are a bit blurry. This one's more in focus. And then, then we have a, a towel and a, looks like a cutting board and a knife. So, uh, so several elements in, in this uh, picture. And then some looks like some, some almost some Christmas lights or something off there in the background that are very out of focus. But again, they add some visual interest uh, to the, uh, the photograph. Okay, another one. Uh, now here's a different grouping. We've just got three and a half apples, I guess. Uh, now we've got a lot of things working here. We've got lines. See how the, the lines of the table are pulling your eyes down through those apples. And yet this apple here is pointing you back in that direction. So we've got a very nice arrangement uh, of several different apples. Again, uh, we're working with a limited palette. You know, we don't have just a ton of different colors here, uh, but uh, all of the colors work together really, really nicely. Now this one, you have to go outside and have an apple tree nearby if you're gonna actually paint this or draw this from life. But, uh, but here is an apple still on the tree. And uh, again, kind of a muted, almost uh, a, uh, uh, a neutral color scheme here, uh, even with the, the branches, which are kind of gray and uh, the, even the, the, the color of the apple is kind of uh, muted and soft. So it's a really nice arrangement. Again, notice the apple is not dead center. It's off to, to one side, and uh, yet the branches are pulling you, you know, into that picture. Okay, so that's all the the uh, uh, different compositions, and there are a lot more. Uh, if you if you happen to want to look at those pictures, uh, let me get on the right layer so I can draw on it here. Um, there we go. If you would like to look at those pictures or get them for yourself, just go to pixabay.com and then search on apples. And all virtually all of those pictures, in fact, all of them, that's where I got all of them, uh, and they'll all come up for you and you can download whichever ones you want uh, as reference pictures if you want to, to practice uh, drawing. Okay, so I'm going to do a quick contour drawing uh, of an apple. Let me make my eraser a little bigger here so I can clear that off. Or actually, I'm going to do two apples because I had difficulty with my reference picture last week. I decided I'm just going to include it as one of the layers in this picture. And that way I don't have to have a program that's going to crash on me like, uh, like happened last time. So, uh, so here, this is the one that I really liked. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to show you again how you do a modified contour drawing. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose a spot on the apple. And in this case, what I'm going to do, because when, when I work, I like to find a, a reference point or a starting point that I work from. So I'm going to start here. This is about a fourth of the way up the page. So I'm going to come right about here and I'm going to just draw a little line that represents that uh, towel or paper or whatever it is. 
and just kind of a little curvy line there. Okay, and I, I've got kind of a thick drawing. There we go. Let's see if I can cut that down a little bit. Okay, so now I'm going to kind of come up and around. And this time I'm, you know, I am able to look and I can retrace my, my steps. I can take my pencil off the paper. I can do pretty much whatever I want to. Uh, it's only with blind contour drawing that you are not allowed to look and not allowed to take your pencil off the paper. Uh, so right now, what I'm trying to do is, is get the shape down. And you're not going to get the shape perfect right from the start, particularly when I'm getting down in here where it's dark. I'm kind of guessing. And then we get way down in here and uh, the, the, the values are, are so dark, it's kind of hard to maintain the shape of that apple. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make some guesses as I come around. And then I'm actually going to come back up here. And I'm going to bring that back down around. OK, so what do I do here? Well, you notice we've got a, a really dark area there. So I'm going to kind of you know, draw that in just to give myself a little bit of a, a reference point. And then this paper is coming over here. So I'm going to go ahead and again, I don't know if it's paper or a towel. I'm just calling it paper. OK, so now I'm back up here and I'm going to come back down in. And I probably would round this out a little bit more. Get my eraser. Whoops, that's way too big. These things, incidentally, are called pucks, and they let me adjust the size of my my tools as I work with them, and I don't have to uh, I don't have to stop too much. Okay, so let me get back to where I was, and here I see this is actually curving in more, so I'm going to go back up here. And I do this a lot when when I'm drawing, whether it's a uh, you know a portrait I'm working on, I will go back and I will refine, and I will adjust and I will erase uh, because I'm not going to get it perfect the first time. I wish I could; that would be a lot of fun. Okay, and then I'm going to come back to my pencil tool here. Okay, notice we've got this little line up here. I'm just going to. Gonna throw that in. And I'm going to go ahead and put a stem in. Okay, here you notice we have a really dark spot, and that's kind of it's not quite halfway, but it's pretty close. I'm just gonna draw a dot there. Okay, and then I'm going to Bring my stem out, and you notice the stem is again almost halfway. It's actually, depending on how you would measure it, it's a little bit below. So I'm going to just pull that stem straight out, maybe add a little curve to it. Okay, now let me come back and round this one out just a little bit more. And I will show you some of my tools. OK, this one actually looks like it could be fatter. And I could do this. You know, you can see why I have uh, about two and a half hours involved in that uh, uh, that portrait that I'm working on, because uh, I will say, oh, that I need to change it. I need to adjust that. And and part of learning this kind of drawing is learning to look and go back and forth between whatever it is you're working from and uh, adjusting as you need to. OK, so in digital art, one of the great things is you have, depending on the app you're using, uh, more tools than you'll ever use in your lifetime. and. Uh, so like here, I have a blender tool, so I can come down here and I can start to mess with my shadows. Now, Pat showed you a pencil. She showed you charcoal. Uh, and so I'm not, gonna, I'm not going to repeat what she showed. I'm just going to show you some of the things that I use. 
one of the cool things, and I have to make sure I have this right when I do this, but it's called a flood fill tool, and I just hit that bucket, and then I can come down here, and I can just fill that in, and then I turn that off again. And up here is where the rest of the paper or whatever it is is, and then I can come back to my blender and and I'm I'm being sloppy here. I'm not uh, taking as much time as I would take if I was trying to do a finished work. But I just wanted you to get the feel for some of the things that I use. Uh, let's see. Then I can use my blender, but I need to make it smaller. And I can actually begin to you know, pull out that little hole we've got there. And let's see. Whoops. Nope, I don't want that one. Hit the wrong button there. see that. And so I have a number of different kinds of blenders. This uh, software is called Autodesk Sketchbook and is really, really uh, useful software. Uh, it's free and you get it at sketchbook.com. And I can go in here, soften that. One of the really cool things that I'll show you eventually is something called locking transparency. And uh, I can set it so that if I've drawn something in, it will let me, or I can set it so that it will only let me draw on something that's already been created. Like if I turn, well, if I locked transparency, let me just do it since I started talking about it. Let's see, where's my locking? There it is, lock layers. Oh, that isn't what I wanted. Let's see, okay, let's get back here. Yep. If I lock transparency, which I just did, then I can begin to, well, nope, I hit the wrong lock button. Okay. Well, now I got, I got busy. I'll unlock the layer. Okay. Well, I'll show you that next time because otherwise I'm going to make this class way too long. So, <laughs> so anyway, there it is. Well, I was going to try to change colors and and uh, what it would let me do if if I had kept this locked, I could actually adjust these colors uh, without messing them up or without uh, changing anything else uh, on the layer. And I'll show you that next time or some other time. Okay. So anyway, uh, with with uh, this kind of uh, tool, uh, I've got uh, all sorts of painting tools that I can work with, and uh, it really is a lot of fun. So I am going to come back here, turn that off, and uh, our time is almost up. Uh, so let me just wrap us up with... Uh, a little thought to carry us through the week here. Let's see what I've got now. What I want is this. Let's see. Nope, not that. There we go. Let me make that bigger. Okay, ruin some of this. You know, I uh, one of the things I really love about Jesus is uh, his parables, his stories. Uh, I'm a storyteller. I've written a number of novels, and uh, uh, I'm writing a novel right now. Uh, and uh, you know, I just as I go to to the Bible, to the Gospels, and I read Jesus' stories. I just uh, love how uh, masterfully he tells his stories, uh, because uh, some of them uh, are you know, designed to, to make things easier to understand. Some of them almost seem designed to make things harder to understand. Have you ever noticed that? Uh, 
And in fact, even the disciples, you know, I, I remember uh, in the Gospels where Jesus tells the, the parable of the soils and or the parable of the sower and um, the disciples you know, hear this and, and, uh, you know, to you and me, cause we've heard it and we've heard the explanation so many times, uh, you know, we, we just think, wow, it's pretty obvious what Jesus is talking about here. Uh, but the disciples, it just, they just couldn't quite figure out what he was getting at. And, uh, and, you know, in fact, Jesus said, boy, you don't you don't don't understand this parable. How can you understand any parable? So so some parables were designed to, uh, you know, make things uh, even harder to understand. And, and uh, uh, there were times when the disciples would say, man, this is this is tough. I, I, I'm not sure uh, what you're getting at here, Jesus. Uh, but then there were other times uh, when Jesus told parables or stories uh, that uh, were designed to really, really help us uh, understand better uh, what he was talking about. And, you know, for me, one of, uh, one of those times was when Jesus uh, was actually in the upper room with his disciples and uh, this was the night before he was going to be crucified. And, you know, he this was a very important time for a number of reasons. But one of which was, uh, you know, Jesus, uh, this this was going to be the last time that he had, uh, you know, aside from after his resurrection. But it was the last time before his crucifixion that he was going to have time uh, to, you know, sit down with his disciples and you know, talk with them and explain to them uh, what, you know, what they really needed to know. Whoops, that was, that was too much there. Let's take that back. Another thing I like about digital art is if it messes up, it's easy to fix. Um, you know, this, this was Jesus, one of his last opportunities to really, really talk with his disciples. And so he told them, uh, it, you know, I don't know that it was really a parable, almost, I think it was more of an object lesson. Uh, but Jesus said, I am the vine uh, and my father is the gardener and every branch in me that bears fruit, he prunes so that it will bear more fruit. And then Jesus, just to make sure that they understand, you know, he, he makes it very clear. He says, you know, I am the vine and you are the branches. And he says, every branch in me bears much fruit. And he says, you know, you have to abide in me because without me, you can do nothing. And that is such an encouragement to me to realize that I don't have the strength or the power myself to be what God wants me to be. It's only because I live in Jesus Christ and I have his power through the Holy Spirit and I can produce and bear forth fruit, not because I'm strong or I'm special, but because he's strong and he puts his life into me uh, through the Holy Spirit. So, you know, there, there are going to be times in your life when you just really don't know what to do. But if you just hang in there with Jesus Christ, and trust in him, he is going to give you the power to be the kind of person that he wants you to be. He is the vine. If you're in him, you're a branch. But if you're a branch, you can bear fruit. But remember, without him, you can do nothing. So, that's class for this week. Uh, I hope you had a good time. Uh, I will 
be back next week. We'll be doing lesson four with uh, uh, with art class. And uh, then I will also tell you how you can uh, win a copy of our uh, our videos that are on cartooning or, again, something else if you prefer. Uh, thank you for watching. I'm Jim Pence. I'll see you next week.